go live. I'm going to right click here. Pop out the chat. And we should be live. Genevieve is here and she is laughing. Let's see if this is going to work. You think this is going to work? <laughs> well, it appears to be working. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I am live. Genevieve is here. We're going to go over some Excalibur talk here. Look over the website. Look over some Excalibur crossbows. We have people from across the Atlantic Ocean. Hello over there. We have people from Portugal. I think I saw some other UK from United Kingdom folks on there. You can't beat that. We have a South Wales Outdoors. Hello to you. So thank you guys for joining us. And we are going to go to the webcam. Here it is. I didn't put out a video last week. I've had some issues with, number one, I've had issues with my voice. So I'm drinking tea tonight, courtesy of the Eastern State Penitentiary. And <laughs> it'll have to help my voice a little bit, hopefully. So I've had troubles with videos for that too. Also, I've been in the computer business, whether I wanted to be or not, and I had installed a new video card. And just like arrows and other crossbow parts, video cards are hard to come by. It was very difficult to get the right card and it was very expensive. And it wasn't one of those things that I wanted to be buying just right now, but it was one of those things that had to be done. So I want to show you to Miss Genevieve here. Hello, Miss Genevieve. Hi. Hey guys. <laughs> so she's here. She is going to, she's an Excalibur aficionado also, and she is going to talk about Excaliburs help me demonstrate the Excaliburs here at the beginning. So that's what we're going to do. Thank you guys for joining me. This is the latest in the videos of the quest for the successor to Bungie. This is an appropriate one to do, I think, as a live stream because I know more about Excaliburs than I do the other brands having shot Bungie for 11 seasons now, going on the 12th season. And that's pretty exciting stuff. So that crossbow's been around a long time, been part of the Death by Bungie family and is, fa is in fact the namesake of the Death by Bungie family. In other words, it is Bungie, of course. So that crossbow is a 2010 Excalibur Axiom, and we will be talking about that. In fact, probably that's the best place to start, and it is to demonstrate the three different sizes of Excalibur crossbows that we're dealing with when we're talking about Excalibur crossbows. And when I'm looking to upgrade Bungie and go to a newer, more modern crossbow, those three bodies are of significance to me. The first is Bungie, and I want to show you that. I have joked before that old Bungie is the world's largest crossbow, okay? Genevieve is going to attempt to hoist Bungie off of the couch. So stand up and show us that bad boy. This is my daughter who's four foot 11. Five foot 10. She's five foot 10, and her holding Bungie. You can see the overall size of that crossbow. I had somebody comment here recently that that wasn't true, that it's the world's largest crossbow, that there were other Excaliburs that were large. I think that if you look at this picture, you will see what I am referring to, and you will understand that I'm not really just joking. In fact, that crossbow, 36 inches wide. Can you see that? 36 inches wide. Show us that width, Genevieve. Hold that up. 36 inches wide. That's three feet wide. Now, Excalibur has, in fact, made other crossbows of an equal size, but equal, not bigger. That is actually the biggest frame, I believe, that, cross, that uh, Excalibur's ever made. I think it's probably the largest crossbow commercially available ever. Now, there are heavier crossbows out there, certainly. This bad boy with the quiver installed, were we around nine and a half pounds, something like that? Somewhere around nine something. So that's not really that heavy a crossbow. The other thing to point out is the length of that crossbow, 39 and a half inches. Now, you can show this to the camera if you don't mind. Come on over here. Show them how we've increased the length of the buttstock on that. We have that little addition on there on the back. Perfect. And that is adds another inch, inch and a half on there. But I like that because it increases the length of it. I got big arms and it works really nice. Now move it over a little bit that way so we can see the foregrip. I love that foregrip. You will notice the lack of finger guards. There's no finger protection there whatsoever. You're out in the open. But it's got such a big stock on it. See, Genevieve would never put her fingers above the rail, right? 
No, I can't. You really can't because it's, it's just sure. common sense, and that's yeah. the way the thing works. So that's not too much of a – you see, that's a great picture of that crossbow right there, and I do like that overall design. Now, let's go over there, and if you can, show us Bungie Jr. She has Bungie Jr. seated over there. Bungie is – Bungie Jr. is uh, – Bungie needs a, its own couch. Actually, <laughs> I'm – <laughs> That's why we got a new couch. I'm stealing Genevieve's joke there. She was kind of making that joke before. That's the micro size from Excalibur. Now, that is 25 inches axle to axle. You get it? Axle to axle? There's no axles. It, it's, that's a little joke. It's a little recurve crossbow humor, maybe. I don't know. When we're looking at all these other crossbows, they're all compound crossbows. They have axle-to-axle -axle measurements, which doesn't tell us the whole story on the width of the crossbow now, does it? However, if we look at this, look at that crossbow, that's pretty sweet, 25 inches, uncocked from one tip to the other on those recurve limbs. And that's a sweet style of crossbow. Come on in here closer, show that up close so folks can get a look at the micro style. Yep, and then turn her sideways here if you don't mind. This Overall does, width. Go ahead. This one does have a finger guard, by the way. And she's pointing out that this one does, in fact, have a finger guard. And I think your fingers are comfortable under there. They're not really, they look like they're touching the finger guard, but the finger guard doesn't get in the way of your use of the crossbone anyway. And it is a safety precaution. It is a good addition. This one, I think we measured, it's around 30, 31 inches long. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the micro size. It is much smaller. And I do like that thumb hole stock. You've got the, the ability to put your hand in there. It's almost like a pistol grip, right? And I've shot this crossbow quite a few times, and I think that's pretty neat. The last thing I want to point out about hers, why don't you show them where that uh, crank mounts on there? Give them a good demonstration of that, if you don't mind. That is right on the back here. Hooks on on both sides. Yep, snap straight in place. Like yep. So there's a variety. There's two different crank systems we've had and used. The preference, I think, for Genevieve is the Charger EXT. That is her yeah. crank of preference. And i got to say, I'm not a fan of the cranks i've talked about that in the other videos but watching her more recently here she's becoming an expert with the old cranks and she makes it look like it's not that big of a predicament okay so if there's ever been a moment where i was kind of inclined to consider getting one with a crank it's probably because miss genevieve here convinced me otherwise just by watching her use it Thank you, Genevieve. Can you say goodbye to us if you want to go play your video games or whatever you were doing? I think she was watching makeup videos on YouTube. Can you believe that? Like worst reviewed makeup artists or whatever. Say that again. Worst reviewed makeup artists. So there is a variety. We'll leave it at that. There's a variety of things for people on YouTube, and not all of them are in the crossbows. Can you believe that? Not everything on YouTube is crossbows. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. So she's going to go back to her business there and watch her stuff. I'm going to continue to drink my tea, and we're going to look over the Excalibur website. Let's go through a couple of comments real quick, but I think it was important to have her in here to demonstrate those two crossbows. So now I can share with you, we'll be able to talk about the three different, not just two, but three different models from Excalibur. And some people are out there like saying, there's three? Wow, there's three. Yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff, isn't there? <laughs> We have some folks saying, hey, stick with the Excaliburs. Other folks going so far as to say, not going to replace this crossbow ever. Do not replace Bungie. I totally appreciate that. I go and look at new crossbows. I've done this through over the years, and you get excited about the new crossbow. Then I go and use one of the new crossbows, and I'm less excited, and I go back to the old crossbow. We got folks saying, assassin all the way. Do you come to the right place? We're going to be looking at the assassin here pretty soon. M. Dotson in Michigan says, hello, I just got the axe. Well, good for you. I think you're referring to the axe from Faradine. Is that the one you're referring to? Please let me know. That's if Rage made a crossbow, it would be the axe crossbow, right? And Excalibur, incidentally, did make an axe for a short period of time, but I think they got rid of it because that name was already taken and they weren't aware of that. Lots of folks saying stick with the... Excaliburs, and I would expect that on this live stream, on this video in the comments. We've got people talking about other models as well. The micro, the 340 takedowns, the 335s, the perfect size for me. Excellence. I like to hear that. And a shout out to South Wales Outdoors. UK law so behind the technology, all bow hunting is still illegal. We're fighting that. New York got some bad news this week. Not going to increase our width or, or decrease our widths, increase our speed limits, draw weights, that sort of thing on the crossbows, and not going to increase crossbow hunting 
available dates either. So very disappointing news. So it isn't just the UK. It's not just the rest of the world that's struggling with crossbow freedoms. We have struggles here. The struggle is real, my friends. It is here in Pennsylvania. Not in Pennsylvania so much, but here in the United States as well. Uh, too bad X-Cal doesn't make a reverse limb recurve like the Scorpid style. Wouldn't be so wide, George Keith. If that's possible, I would like to know about the reverse. The Scorpid, when I looked at that video, wow, I got excited about Scorpid. And if Excalibur could turn some limbs around, maybe that would be interesting technology. I'm sure they're playing with stuff like that. So pretty interesting stuff. <clears throat> and we have my advice from your mother, Excalibur Assassin 400 takedown. We're going to look at them now. Let's go look at these crossbows. That 400 takedown is an interesting crossbow. I'm going to pick up my tee, and we're going to go to ExcaliburCrossbows.com. What is that? Holy cow, did Excalibur go out of business? That's actually ExcaliburCrossbows.com. Believe it or not, that's not their web address. It's ExcaliburCrossbow.com. Isn't that funny? So I just figured I'd start off with that little funny thing. That's actually Excalibur Crossbows. Dot com. And that's not what we're looking for. We are looking for, my friends, ExcaliburCrossbow.com. Crossbow singular. And we're going to pop that up here, and I'm going to see if we can look at this stuff and see what we can do. Uh, let me show a comment here. I had a comment from somebody saying about a sled-style cocking, and YouTube blocked that. So I'm going to unblock it because that is not an inappropriate comment. But thank you, YouTube, for looking out for us. I do try to limit the swearing and stuff on Death by Bungie. That is not something I like to have as part of our videos. Um, I'll get rid of that real quick. Let's just look at this website here. You guys, I hope, are seeing the website as I am. I haven't done this in a live stream in a long time, so hopefully it's going to work for us. I think it will. But we have the Assassin 400... Takedown pops up as the first one. You can page through these on here. And unlike some of our other videos, I am quite familiar with the Excalibur Crossbow website. I've been on this thing a thousand times. I'm on it all the time, have been over the last decade or more looking at various crossbows. So I am familiar with their various models. And this won't be as much of a learning experience for me like many of our other crossbow videos have been, our review style videos. Those I'm looking, some of those I looked at the website for the first time. And I was very honest about about that. Had a comment recently, somebody was upset that I didn't know anything about these crossbows, but I'm learning about them for the first time. That's the purpose of looking at their website. Learn about them, read your comments, and then delve into it a little bit further if it piques my interest. Here we've got the Assassin 400 takedown. The thing that I wanted to point out, we talked about, we got the Micro 340 takedown. You see the micro size there. When we are talking about that Micro 340 takedown or any of the crossbows from Excalibur that use micro in their names, that should be telling us about a 25-inch wide limb set very similar to what Genevieve just showed us at the beginning of this video. 25 inches wide, that's the micro size from Excalibur. And then we have, when we scroll up here, we will find, for example, and we'll scroll down because up didn't give it to us, but when we go down here, we have, ah, they're giving away, I was gonna sound like a genius and tell you about the third size, but they're already showing us that. Um, if we look on here, there are other, there's another ex, uh, assassin called the 420, and those have a 30-inch width, but then we look down here, and of course they have what they refer to as the Matrix series. That's an older size, but that includes the, uh, yeah, the, the Matrix size. That's the 30-inch width, the Assassin 420. Ah, so there we go. That is the three sizes that we're talking about here. I'm going to hop back onto my webcam. So we got three sizes, okay? When we look at these crossbows, I just want to set the stage, three different sizes. You have the 36 inch width of bungee. That is no longer available. Can't get one of those. They don't make those anymore. They're not on here. We won't be looking at those. That's the dinosaur, right? 36 inches wide, 305 feet per second. 175 pound draw weight. So that, that was like kind of the bottom level offering from Excalibur in 2010 the Axion when that was purchased. In addition to that, today they really have two sizes. Today they have the 25 inch wide micro series and then the 30 inch wide matrix series. Now I'm looking to upgrade from a 36 inch wide crossbow. So on one hand, 
Both of those new models, the 30 and the 25, are going to be narrower. They're both an improvement. They're both a step up from a larger 36 inch wide crossbow, right? On the other hand, if I'm gonna upgrade, do I wanna just lose six inches or would I rather lose like 11 inches, right? Go from 36 to 25. That's kind of more attractive to me. I'm gonna be honest, 25 inches. I'd used Genevieve's crossbow last year, last fall, shot a doe in Maryland with that crossbow. That was an exciting hunt for me. It was a kind of a life-changing moment for me, a real eye-opener at least, because it convinced me that, look, the speed of that, that increase in speed going from 305 up to the faster crossbow, that was worth the upgrade, okay? from 305-ish up to, in her case, 359 or 346. I'll talk about that in just a second here. But into the 350s, around 350. That extra feet, 50 feet per second is an increase, right? But the other thing was my crossbow barely fit in the blind that we were hunting out of. And her crossbow got the job done in that small blind. That's impressive. Now, I wanted, when I mentioned those speeds, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Now, Bungie... I don't have the sound effects on the live stream, so I'll have to do it myself. Bungie, right? How's that? <laughs> so hopefully you guys are enjoying this. But there's a nice broadhead. We're not here to talk about broadheads, but that's the broadhead that I got on here anyway. So i got to be careful I don't cut myself or cut something on my desk with that. I almost cut my headphone cord here previously with that. But this is a 20-inch arrow. This is what you will be shooting out of the 36-inch wide crossbows, the 20-inch arrows, those older Excalibur arrows. Genevieve's crossbow, the micro series, right, is going to shoot a 16 and a half inch arrow. So you're losing four inches off the end. I want to be clear that that really has more to do with the draw length power stroke of the crossbow. Okay. It has more to do with the compact size of the crossbow. Remember how I mentioned Bungie is 39 and a half inches long. Bungie Jr. is only 31, 30 or 31 inches long. And that shorter crossbow requires a shorter arrow. That's the big difference. In fact, this arrow, without a field point or broadhead, weighs 261 grains. 261. This arrow, four inches longer, weighs 265 grains. It only weighs four grains more. There's almost no difference in weight between the two of these, right? So that is not significant right? It isn't the weight of these arrows. They're essentially the same weight. And I don't, I think there's the extra four inches on this longer arrow really just gives you four grains. I, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. I weighed them and that's the way they, you know, they make up the difference with the inserts, that sort of thing too. They probably have different inserts or something like that, but there isn't much difference in weight. I just want to be clear about that. There's a difference in length, not so much of a difference in weight by my measurements, my calculations, when I measured them and calculated them here. So now we've talked about those arrows. Speed-wise, Genevieve's crossbow, that micro series, hers is a micro 355 suppressor. We will not see that on the list when we go through those crossbows, but that thing's shooting around. My our speed test that we did on Wednesday with a 100 grain field point, she's shooting around. Uh, it was like, uh, what was it? I should have been more clear in my notes. 359 feet per second. So she's at 359 with this with 100 with 100 grain and 346 with a 150. That's blazing fast. This guy, Bungie, is only around 302 feet per second with a 100 grain field point. So we'll go back on the old X, XCAL website. I just want you to have all that information. I want that to be in mind as we're going forward here and looking at these different crossbows. We're going to go here. We're going to click on here. And we're going to go to products because that's probably where we're going to find some crossbows. We're going to click on crossbows, which is already there. And we see the twin strike. We will not be looking at that. I did another video on that. Some of you are saying, whoo, I'm glad he's not looking at that. Some of you are saying, well, let's go look at that. But if you want to look at that in more detail, go to the other videos I did on the twin strike. You can do that. The crossbows, and I do want to show some other ones too. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom to show you a few things. If you are looking for what's probably the modern version of Bungie, I think this is one contender for that. I am not looking for the modern version of Bungie, but in reality, this crossbow, the Matrix Grizzly 2, it's GRZ, it stands for Grizzly, I think, but it's like the updated version of the Grizzly. 
305 feet per second. Sound familiar? That's exactly what Bungie shoots. And this one also has the 30, if I remember correctly, the arrow length on this is 18. Those are Diablo style arrows. Those are in between the 20 inches that Bungie shoots and the 16 and a half inches that Bungie Jr. shoots. That Diablo style fits with those 30 inch limbs. Okay. So this one's got the 30 inch limbs and it's a matrix style. That's why it says matrix, of course, 30 inch wide, right? Uncocked and about 305 feet per second. You're getting that for 550. That's if you remember from my book, for those of you who read my book, if you did so, my book, The Death by Bungie Crossbow Story, uh, available on amazon.com. <laughs> but in my book, I talked about the fact that I paid 550 bucks for Bungie 11 years ago. That crossbow, I could hunt another 11 years with that thing. Do you know I am still using the original rope cocker with that crossbow? I am using the original tube of Scorpion Venom rail lube with that crossbow. That's how long that crossbow has uh, worked for me. And I've never taken it to a shop or anything like that, never had the need. I do want to point out, however, that when you're dealing with these less expensive models, this crossbow on here that we're looking at, that Matrix GRZ2, that crossbow has a synthetic rail, whereas Bungie, I think, was the last year that they made that cheap model with the aluminum rail with an aluminum uh, flight deck and the whole bit. And I think that that, at least from what I've read, contributes to a longer lasting crossbow. So that might be something to consider. You may not get, my point is you may not get, um, you can't, there's no guarantee you're going to get the same amount of lifespan out of this crossbow that you might out of another model. But nonetheless, certainly if you're interested in looking at those crossbows that is uh, you know i don't see any reason why you couldn't start out with a crossbow like that and maybe get a lot of use out of it the when we look at the matrix g340 there you're paying 100 bucks more but you are shooting uh 25 35 feet per second faster that's an improvement and then there is of course the mag series which i hear nothing but great things about and that is the 340 feet per second crossbow, but that one is 25 inch wide limbs. So you're paying another hundred bucks, staying in the same speed class, but you're getting a narrower crossbow. And there you go. So I think overall, if I had to pick, I'm really down to that micro size. Now, when we look at the Excalibur options that they've got here, the Twin Strike is off for me. That's a brand new offering. Shoots two arrows simultaneously or one after the other, your pick. Not too much interested in that. That's not what I'm looking to accomplish. And I've mentioned before, I kind of want to stay from the late, away from the latest and greatest. Stay away from the brand new model that may or may not be time tested. I mean, in a couple of years, we might all not like that. On the other hand, in a couple of years, we might really like that crossbow. Who knows? So I'm really looking at, to me, what I consider Excalibur's a, a, you know, flagship to be the Assassin, and that comes in three different forms today. We have the 400 TD, T, that TD stands for takedown, it comes off, the riser disconnects from the barrel, and therefore you can take the crossbow apart in two different parts, put it back together, and it should shoot the same. I have been assured by friends of Bungie that even though I'm a little nervous about that concept, they assure me that it will work, and it will be suitable, and it will be accurate when you put it together. That that Assassin comes in a 400, it comes in a 420, and that 420 has the matrix sized limbs. That goes up to 30 inches. So I'm not really as interested in that one. There is an Assassin 360, an older model, which they still sell. Nothing wrong with that one, nothing wrong at all. You're saving some money, you're going down to $15.99. And you're getting a crossbow that's going to shoot 360 feet per second. It's going to be a little bit narrower. It's going to be, uh, it's just a nice package. I do want to look at, for the purposes of this video, and I'm trying to keep this around the 30 minute mark because that's about as long as people want to watch these videos. <laughs> I appreciate that people have been watching these review videos, but it takes a while to go through everything that they offer on these things. And I am seeing in the comments, I am keeping an eye on the comments the best I can, and I am seeing that people really, really do like the mag, right? That mag is an inexpensive, and that kind of in some ways is the modern bungee also. It is one of their cheaper models, but it's, uh, you know, that's a good, basic, durable crossbow, and that is what has served me for years. I certainly have no objections to that. So we're looking at the Assassin 400, and I want to show you 
what I find attractive about this crossbow, if I do upgrade to an Excalibur, it will probably be this crossbow. We'll start first with those arrows. Look at the arrow that's in here. That is a Pro Flight. Does that look familiar? It should. That's the 16 and a half inch Pro Flight quill sized arrow, 261 grains that Bungie Jr. shoots. In other words, I would be using the same arrows that Genevieve uses. So I don't even have to buy arrows. I'll just have her buy arrows and I'll use her arrows. How's that? <laughs> is that pretty funny? <laughs> I don't know. Um, that, in all seriousness, it kind of does make sense for me for a guy that's now outfitting two hunters. I mean, she's an, an adult and she'll be paying her own way here soon. But I certainly want to encourage Genevieve every bit that I can, right? I want her to be as successful out there as she can. I want her to be as motivated as possible to continue to hunt. So... You know, I'm buying these. I might as well buy two sets of these or dip into her sets of these, right? Because I already bought her a ton of 150 grain Rage crossbow tripans that go on the end because we really like those broadheads. I like them, but she really likes them too. And it's 150 grains. That 150 grains on the end of the short arrow like this, that's a deadly combo. I really do like it. But it kind of makes sense to use the same size. I commented before. Now, the thing about those these crossbows, right, that I may or may not like is the crank. I have appreciated the fact that I can crank that, I can cock bungee in two seconds with the same rope cocker. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm using the original rope cocker that came with that crossbow. But I've watched Genevieve when we were doing these speed tests on Wednesday, and she really has it down using the crank. I really like that. I think she can crank that thing back, and it's really, it's quick, it's easy, and maybe I could get used to a crank also. I'm a little bit leery of it, you know, because I'm old fashioned and because you get in a groove and you don't like change. And I just feel like that is just the way it is. So, but I do like those 16 and a half inch arrows that is attractive to me, as is the 25 inch wide body. Okay. That, that limb size, the quivers on these are three arrow quivers. I don't get that. Although it looks like they got a four arrow quiver on this. Hers is a three arrow quiver, but if I can get my original four arrow quiver on here or a four arrow quiver, I think I'd be happier with that. We don't have to worry about stirrups and all that good stuff on here. This does have the sound dampening equipment in place. And, you know, you've got the rubber on the limbs, both places there and all that good stuff. I, I think there are string stars that come in the string and that's going away. I don't like those. I've had problems with those in the past to go back and watch those videos. The thumb hole stock I love. I do like that. I do like the location of the safety. I was a little leery of that because I have the hammer style that normally would be back, you know, above the behind the trigger assembly, behind the safety and all that. But instead, you don't have that on here because this is actually, by putting that blue thing right there is the safety, right below the scope, that blue knob that sticks out. That's the safety mechanism. And that's actually pretty good. I, I think that's a good location because it's, it's right above where your thumb's going to be. The other thing I like about the Assassins is the built-in crank system. That's kind of attractive. Now, you don't see the handle in place in this picture, but you do see where the handle goes when it's not in use. There is The handle is going to be put into that round disc back there on the butt for cocking purposes, right? It slides in there and you cock the crossbow. When you're done cranking that up, it slides back into that little slot, very similar looking slot, next to the Assassin logo. Um, the, between the Assassin logo and the trigger, there's that little slot. So you can store your handle right there handy, right? No pun intended, but you got your handle handy. You can just snap that off of there, snap it back in place, crank the crossbow back again. The other thing that I want to point out, you see that blue knob that's on there, and you have, it's sort of a cutout design. The trigger, now this, this cuts two ways, and I'm going to go back to the camera here because I, I want to emphasize this. You're holding the crossbow right here, triggers here, and then there's this little trigger box, right? That actually breaks away, goes down the rail, retrieves the string, hooks onto the string with the hooks, inside it, all internal. And then you crank it back, and it draws the string back. I don't like the fact that every time you cock that crossbow, you're taking the trigger apart, <laughs> right? Think about this. You are... Take, you're breaking the whole trigger assembly in half, sending half of it down the rail to get the string, and having it come back and hoping it's going to snap back into place and everybody's going to be everybody's going to play nice and it's going to be good. That's a lot of moving parts. It makes me uncomfortable. It makes me nervous. I have absolutely no evidence 
that it is a problem. And I want to be clear about that. I haven't read anything from people, heard anything from people about how that's a problem. And I'm, but it just seems to me that it's asking for trouble. It's more moving parts. With my rope cocker, I don't have all those moving parts. The trigger housing holds the trigger in place, and it all stays right there and does its job. And I, I don't even have an anti-dry fire complicating the mess. It just, I've never had a problem with it. It's just, you cock it back and boom, right? So I don't like that. I don't, I don't like all the extra movement. On the other hand, because there's trade-offs with this stuff, I do like that style of crank where it's contained, where it goes down and brings the string back, and if you decock it, you're not firing it the way you fire Bungie or even Bungie Jr., you're not firing it, which releases the string with all that tension on it. Okay, in the case of Bungie Jr., 285 pounds of tension against that serving. And then you decock it, you fire it, the trigger is still releasing that. And it's still going to chew up your serving somewhat. This doesn't do that. When you decock this one, it never even releases the string. It just lowers it back down. That's kind of neat. And to me, that will increase, improve serving wear i think and serving wear is important to all of us right doesn't matter if you got a recurve and you can change your string yourself you still got to change the string with other crossbows with compound crossbows some of them you can change the string yourself some of them you can't but either way it's a hassle who wants to do that if you don't need to pardon me but man i gotta keep my voice up here if i don't keep drinking stuff i'm gonna have voice problems i don't need voice problems thank you very much Lever action for the super chat. That's fantastic. I really appreciate that. Um, I appreciate you guys. Seriously, the super chat is fantastic. It's appreciated. It definitely is. So is your attendance at these live streams, your comments on the live streams. I do want, I am keeping kind of an eye out here and I have that big new monitor that helps me see everything on the screen at once. That's hopefully an improvement. That's why I had to invest in that video card. This is not the era in which to be buying video cards. Let me tell you what, but I do appreciate you guys. Your, your, uh, attendance on this and I really do appreciate you guys and I will go back and look at the comments if I haven't caught them here I did get a comment that I'm looking tired I am 100% tired well it's the end of the week for one thing but I also went and had my second vaccination shot so that's probably wearing me right down right now I feel fine but they say you get tired afterwards so it's, it is what it is right but uh, but but now that I've been fully vaccinated um, hopefully Canada won't reject me any further. <laughs> and I want you guys to know too, I have, I'm looking at Excalibur crossbows, which is of course a Canadian crossbow company, right? And by all means, I have no bad feelings against Canada whatsoever. I did get a comment or two saying, you know, Rich doesn't like Canadians because you made a joke about that. I was just trying to keep it a little bit of levity here. Everything I am saying about the border closed and all that stuff is tongue in cheek. The day will come when I go to Canada and shoot black bears. It's going to happen. And I hope Canadians will welcome me there. And I will gladly welcome Canadians here to our meet and greets or any other events that we have here in the States. Um, I welcome crossbow hunters across the board and appreciate um, you joining these things. But I look forward to hunting with you in Canada one of these days. So, And that is, believe me, I have no uh, hard feelings or bad feelings against Canada in any way, shape, or form. But we'll go back to the website here. There really isn't a lot more I want to say about this crossbow because it is very much what I have been hunting with all along. I think I could put my stock, or excuse me, my scope on top of that, and it would look really, really good. I think it would look sweet on top of there, and I think it would be appropriate. And this is a 400 feet per second crossbow. That scope would work with it perfectly. The fact that this crossbow, I think there are two more thoughts that I'm going to say before I sign off of this. There are two more thoughts I want to say about this crossbow and Excalibur in general. One is Excalibur is an attractive company to me because I'm so familiar with it. It would be like stepping up to a newer version of the same thing. I wouldn't have to learn about cams. I wouldn't have to learn a new trigger system. I wouldn't have to learn a new method of cocking necessarily. I'm not going to be rope cocking any of these. Those days are, I'm, I'm kind of almost accepting the fact that those are kind of behind us, especially if you go with the Excaliburs. But watching Genevieve on Wednesday, Convince me there's some room for these. There's a place for these cranks. And she it was very seamless, and she seemed to do a very good job of it. She's 
leaps and bounds ahead of where she was last year. And maybe if I start working with a crank now, maybe next year I'm really good with a crank. Who knows, right? So that, that isn't as much of a turnoff. And I do like that Excalibur for that reason. There is that familiarity, and that's worth something. That's, that's important stuff. But the other thing I want to point out is that with, with Excalibur at 400 feet per second, if I put a 150 grain broad in on here at 400 feet per second, I'm down to about 380 something. And that's booking. That's fast, right? It's going to kill deer. There's no question about that. But with the Excaliburs, they're getting their speeds with a 350 grain arrow. You can go and look at those. That's basically one of these without a Luminoc, okay? One of these. And a 100 grain broadhead or field point. So now we're at 350 grains, traveling 400 feet per second. I want 400 grains, or with the Luminoc, 415 grains, 411 grains, something like that. But it's going to slow it down into the 380s, right? And you're at, with these Excaliburs, you're kind of at the bottom of that Remember that chart that I have, which I don't have for you in this video, unfortunately, but you would be a little bit in the slower, lower number category with the Excaliburs. Not at the bottom, not at the bottom, and leaps and abounds, uh, leaps and bounds beyond where Bungie is, 100%. There's no doubt about that. So you're, it's really a vast improvement for me. I'm jumping up 100 feet per second. I mean, what's not to love? I'm jumping from 36 inches wide to 25 inches wide. But if you're going to pay all the money to upgrade, does it make sense for me to upgrade to Excalibur when the numbers don't jump as much as they might with a 10 point or with a Raven or with a Scorpid or with some of the other crossbows, right? When I did the review of Mission, you're in that same speed category, the 380s, which is attractive to me, don't get me wrong, but when you're spending that much money, people were pointing out in the comments, and they have a, a valid point, something worth considering. I'm not saying it's going to convince me in the end, but it is something worth considering. Are you getting enough for your money? If you're only going into those categories, you're not going into 440 or 450 feet per second or something like that. I'm not saying I got to be 450 feet per second. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. We're talking about bang for your buck, right? That's kind of what we're talking about. So there it is. Um, I'm going to go through the comments real good because this is going well. And I might look tired. It has been a long week for me, but I do feel fantastic. So um, there we are. Old guys, two old guys with crossbows. That's a, a YouTube channel you should be subscribing to if you don't already. But two old guys with crossbows. I wonder what it's about. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get a drink before I move on from that. $70 Canadian for three Luminox. I hear you. Luminox are not cheap, but I do like them. And here's one thing I'll tell you. If your arrow breaks... Pull the Luminoc out. The first few that I lost, actually I broke the arrows. I actually threw them away and didn't keep the Luminox. I don't know what I was thinking. You know, I didn't really fully understand what I was doing. <clears throat> but keep those Luminox, man. They're, they're awesome. You can replace the batteries. They'll light right up. They're fantastic. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> Frederick Beerweiler telling me, stop it, Rich. You'll buy anything Genevieve needs. Yeah, pretty much. Whatever gets her happy. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, you know. Alan Pape, I would like a crank. Um, I cocked Bungie Jr. once without a crank, and I too would like a crank. And that's why we went and bought a crank. Because <laughs> uh, it can be done. I mean, physically, you can lift 285 pounds every time you want to cock your crossbow if you want. But man, I don't know. Yeah. Lever Action likes the cranks. That's good to hear. The guys that are using cranks, you guys, you know, I've been out of it 11 years with a rope cocker. I've been using a rope cocker. And when I come back to look at new crossbows, they all got cranks. It's like almost all of them use a crank. They all have cranks available, right? When I was looking at them 11 years ago, the cranks were a special order, right? They, they weren't something that you got on all crossbows. So it's different for me, but whatever, you know. Crank takes the fun out of it. For me, Randy Weaver, in the backyard, I kind of agree with you. You know, I can shoot five times in the time that it takes Genevieve to get a shot off. Maybe three times, you know, now because she's getting better with it. But it does, it's like more like a job, you know. But, but it is what it is. If, if The trade-off is I'm going from 300 feet per second to 400 feet per second. And that's, that's a pretty good trade-off. That's a lot of speed, you know. That's like 
that's a lot. <laughs> Those numbers, I'm not going to make you go through the Realtree uh, arrow momentum calculator, but I will tell you that it's, that it's a lot. And we, we all know it's a lot, right? So there we go. Modern day drifter, remember less moving parts, less things can go wrong. I hear you on that when you start adding, you know, Power windows, you put power windows in your car, and eventually those power windows, they will not last as long as the crank, as the crank window, right? But on the other hand, the last few cars I've had, the power windows did not go. Think about that. Mm, the first ones did. Remember that? That's actually, maybe that's a good analogy. I don't know. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Buy it already. <laughs> 400 takedown suppressor, modern day drifter. That is a good crossbow. It is attractive. I do think that the takedown is important to me, taking that apart, because then if I want to travel, I can put it in two parts. Um, people swear that works. They swear it works. I'm leery of it. I kind of don't like it, but I'm telling you, I would take it down, put it back together all the time. And that way I would know for sure if, in fact, it's going to take that, make that shot perfectly when I put it back together. I would know by the time I go somewhere. Dutch 1722, how ambidextrous is the Excalibur? Mine, old Bungie, is 100% ambidextrous. Right now, without changing anything on it, you, if you're left-handed, you could cock Bungie with a rope cocker, if you're able to do so, Genevieve can't, but you could cock it with your, with your left hand, pick it up and fire it with your left hand, and you wouldn't know the difference. There's nothing about that. Assuming you put the quiver, the quiver would have to be bolted and put on the other side. But everything else about that, the scope, the firing, the safety, everything is 100% right down the middle. It's, a, it's like a mirror image of itself So for that. Now, the newer ones, those cranks, I think you guys weigh in on this if I'm wrong. But if we look at that, the cranks can go either way. You can crank them left or right-handed. You can switch that around. I do believe that's the case. And I think on those assassins, I think it's both sides. Okay, So I think that, that that's doable. Jennifer Robinson, my immune system is kicking in. Well, it's better better now than later, right? <laughs> what are you going to do? Duck season in Canada. Well, I hope you get up there too. Will, Ville, Ville Nets. Will Nets. I hope you get up there, and I hope that you get a crack at the ducks. That's going to be good. And I'm looking forward to those videos. Except, yeah. My family is from Canada. We escaped to Maine. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny, Lever Action. I didn't know that. That's pretty funny. And I am not blaming Canada. There's none of that going on. I love I love Canada. The, I wouldn't have hunted with an Excalibur crossbow for that long if I had a real problem with Canada. I don't pick crossbows based on their country of origin, that's for sure. That's not important to me. It's just well, how it's going to perform for me doing the hunting. That's all that matters. That would be neat. Uh, Phil is suggesting I drive up there and actually buy one from the Canada company, from their factory. That would be kind of interesting. I would love to tour that place someday because I, I do have, regardless of what crossbow I go with, the Excalibur name, that brand, that style of crossbow, that's meant a lot to me. I mean, I wouldn't be here right now. The logo's got an Excalibur crossbow in it, kind of, right? It's got the design of Bungie in there. So that, that's important to me. But does it moose? John, I think it does. <laughs> All right, you guys are, you want to see it. I know. We'll do it. What the heck? Back by popular demand. We're going to do the, <laughs> you, you thought I wasn't able to do it, but what the heck? We'll do it. Okay, you guys are hanging around. We will go to Realtree's Aerokinetic Energy and Momentum Calculator, and we will see what that assassin does. This is from memory, but we have an arrow weight of 415, oop, not 500, holy cow. Who do you think I am, lever action? <laughs> uh, that's a bad joke. If I were lever action, that, this is what I would be putting in, the max. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to call anybody out. That's the vaccine talking. Anyway, we'll do the, a 415, which is a reasonable arrow for a reasonable guy such as myself. And that arrow is going to be traveling... Normally 400 with that Assassin 400 takedown, but because we've added that extra 50 grains, the 150 grain field point or broadhead, we will be reducing the overall speed of the crossbow by 12 or 13 feet per second, something like that. So we're probably, we'll give it a good safe estimate at 488. I personally have found, I have found the 
Excaliburs to be pretty accurate and maybe a little bit under representative of their speeds, at least on my chronograph. Bungie does not hit the full 305, except for, you know, when I with a Luminoc. I take the Luminoc out, it'll hit 305. But Genevieve's actually fires above. I can make her shoot in excess of the 355 feet per second. So we're going to generate the kinetic energy and momentum by hitting this button right here. And we're going to see how fast or how, whether it mooses or not. And we're going to see what kind of energy we can generate or expect. And we got a moose. Look at that. Bum, bum, bum. 219. Holy cow. That can't be right. Yeah, come on, Rich. 388. Not <laughs> the live stream. That was the real tree version of a dry fire. For you, for you folks that have been following Death by Bungie for a while, you probably will get a kick out of that. So we're at 388 feet per second. We're going to generate that. It probably is going to need me to refresh because it, this website gives me fits. So we are going to do that. We're going to go back on here, and I'm going to go to... This is going to be a pain to butt, isn't it? Uh, we'll go on here. Um, I'm going to go and refresh it by going, we'll go to deathbybungie.com, then we'll come back here and interact. I don't think it's going to let me do that. We'll click on this, and then we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to click over here and try and do something like that. Nope. And now if I go and go back to it, maybe it'll let me do it. It's going to give me fits no matter what I do. So I think we're going to have some problems here. But All right. Now. Uh, having a little trouble. A little bit of trouble. Boom. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We will go to a different website because I screwed that one up. And the way that this software works, that gets to be a little bit of a problem. And I'm not familiar enough to do it. But this is best crossbow That's source and other one I use. And we'll get even more data out of this. But we're going to try and enter the correct uh, information. I've said that before, garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> Arrow speed, again, we're going, now we're going about 388, we're going to say. And we're doing that with a 415 grainer. See, it's all those jokes I made. The jokes, and, uh, they checked, take away from my concentration. I'm not going to worry about the fletching link and all that. That makes a slight, subtle difference. Not enough for us to worry about here. Although, if we want to be picky, we can put 16.5. Three or four days ago, or around the second or third. We'll third calculate number, ballistics. Starting to see pretty ballistics, but whatever. Today. We'll go with it. And I'm here's the numbers you can expect, and I can tell you, yes, it mooses. Now, we don't get the fun moose icon here. That is regrettable. In and that's midday hours. Too bad, but we'll get that in a few things are crank, but And it's actually if we look, we are at 0 0.71 momentum, so we're happily in the 0.71s. No, that's in the I mean, right hand corner here. I'll try to highlight that was. 0 0.71 uh, momentum off the barrel of the crossbow, right off the end of the riser. 139 foot pounds of kinetic energy. That should open that rage broadhead very well. That should do a good job for us. The interesting thing to point out about this is that at 70 yards, not so saying I'm shooting a deer at 70 like yards, we're not doing that, that but at 70 yards, we still have 119 foot-pounds so of kinetic energy. I do think this is a, we a still have spot at 0 .662 you saw deer momentum, deer in the 0.6 slugs, I think we can almost see 0.7 slugs, 0.6 and a half slugs at to calls or whatever, 70 yards. Not Holy cow. That is a lot of momentum. And that is more than Bungie being on the point now. Probably, probably more than Bungie being on Even at 70 yards, that crossbow by the Samson 400 is going to have more momentum for the stock spot. You put a not so cute broadhead on there on a 16 and a half inch plane. And all of a sudden you've got point. Six six at seventy yards, and I think Bungie Junior with the stock one hundred grain broadhead is probably about that. Uh, a little bit under that with the point with the one hundred fifty grain around that, but uh, but at zero. Okay, so that it's a powerful crossbow. But those numbers when that you I get as you increase that speed. When it's you November, like really cold, calm, you look at the ruts going, and I love hunting hardwood ridges. I want to hear that deer coming. Right 
were to really me, that's just typical about the arrow classic drop at that Boy tail hunting. That becomes and a value, not that's what we've momentum. got right now. Those momentum Southern numbers, Ohio, and energy numbers, just are satisfied, awesome in my opinion. The Once problem you get is to we're not second, seeing you're almost any like deer, all the numbers you're need. and we're hardly seeing any but, running activity. I mean, you need and to shoot through trees. Be prime, you know, I want, I want trees to stop my arrow. Not, I don't want it going through the tree. You know we've talked with some local guys who like, once are seeing deer, deer and that's, great that's running activity, yeah, but we got all the penetration we sometimes you just get in these areas the where either right the now, does are locked down, you know, through, the, you know, I can't get the bucks are locked down with the does, or something has happened, and they're just not here, so you have to make tough choices, and the tough choice I'm going to make right now is we're going to climb out of this tree, and we're going to take our tree stands down. We're gonna drive about 15 or 16 hours to Kansas. I do like this. I do like. I'm gonna try to get there in time to hunt in the morning and not lose a bit of daylight, any of the rut activity, any of the rut time because there's so little of it, and I have so little time. I have great big bucks on trail camera here, sitting in a beautiful spot. You've accomplished what you set out to do, right? You got numbers that should satisfy all of your hunting interests. And then we have been I go and spend all this time on a calculator. Chasing what if I the put rut, this on? quite what literally. Put that Which defeats the purpose. The whole point was not have to do Yesterday that. morning. It's fun. To, it's fun to do. We were in southern Ohio. What else? What else are we doing? This morning <laughs> we're in Kansas. All right. We drove all So night. thank you all very much. Um, what did I hear about? They're telling me that I got something half, playing on my PC uh, before daylight, and, and had to come in and hang these tree stands in the dark. I am going to turn this off. I don't know what else was playing or why that was doing it, but it is now off. Thank you for pointing that out, and I'm sorry. I don't know what triggered that, but I will pull that off of there. It might be one of those websites playing in the background trying to run stuff. It could be that. So either way, if that's the problem, hopefully that has been fixed, and I am sorry about that. So, hmm. Don't take experimental drugs and live stream. <laughs> Boy, you got that right. <laughs> Oh, uh, we shall see. <laughs> All right. That did it. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm apologizing for that too. Are you in a plane? Yeah, that sound, I don't know what was going on with that. It was, it was playing another thing off the desktop. So there is something. I have headphones and I could monitor this, but then you'd be sitting there looking at me the whole time with headphones on. And yeah, that's, that's too much. I don't, I don't need to be one of those YouTubers. You know, I'll get the, the little microphone that comes around there and all that stuff. I don't think we need to do all that stuff. So, yeah, there we go. So, um, what scope, that's a good question. What scope does Bungie use? What is your opinion on it? Uh, let me do this. I'll show you that scope up close. I had Genevieve showing that at the beginning of the live stream, and I will try to get over there and do that. Um, I'm going to walk over here. don't know if you can still hear me, but here we go. This is old Bungie, and I'll get right up there. This is the Twilight DLX scope from Excalibur. Okay, Twilight DLX, it is illuminated. It does have, uh, I think it's a 44 objective lens, 44 millimeters, and a 30 millimeter tube, okay? It's not the one inch tube. And because of that, that's what gives it the name Twilight DLX. And at twilight, what that does, I hope you guys are able to hear that, but 40 millimeter objective lens or 44 millimeter objective lens, it's one of the bigger crossbow scopes. And then the, thir the 40 millimeter tube, or excuse me, 30 millimeter tube, that lets in a lot of light. And that scope, I really love it. It's the Twilight DLX. I'm not even sure they make it anymore. Um, they've replaced it with a new one. They have an Overwatch scope. They got a couple new models. But I'm liking that thing. Yep. One digital watcher. Whatever you buy, I am 100% with you. For good or bad, man, I haven't bought anything yet, but we'll see. I keep going back and forth. I have seen a lot of neat stuff out there, and I really look forward to wrapping up this series of looking at them and then sharing with you the testing of those crossbows. We'll all be in on that. That'll be fun. I do think you'll be buying the Excalibur, Robert... Bevington, and we'll see. We shall see. And then Phil Rosalique is doing some math for us, and I always appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So, 
thank you very much for joining me. We are now, now we're getting close to the hour mark, which was longer than what I wanted to be. But you guys have really stuck around here and hung into this, and I appreciate that, and I hope that it has been worth your time and that we've learned a little bit of something about the Excalibur crossbows. They are still in the mix. They are one of the five. I think I'm at five right now, and I'm not going beyond five. Somebody might drop out of there and be replaced with another brand, but we're going to stay with five to go try, okay, to try in person. And... That, that whole process is progressing, but I won't share that with you just yet, but it's going to be worth your time. It's going to be fun. I'm going to make it the most fun it can be, right? And we're going to pick the right crossbow, right? That's how we're going to do it. So, okay, we'll see how we make out. Thank you very much for joining me. I am going to type a little thing in here before we get out of here, and I thank you guys. I sincerely thank you for joining me. That is, it means a lot to me because it's been a long week, a rough week, and a lot of stuff has happened this week, and um, but it is what it is, and I'm glad we're at where we're at. I'm looking forward to the weekend. It's going to be a nice weekend. I'm going to go out there and shoot some crossbows, and I hope you do the same. Until then, until next time, all hail Bungie. <laughs>